Okay, so today we continue with our laws of Hilchot uh, Diot, right? Hilchot uh, Diot Mishnah Torah. Today is class number 26, and we start with uh, Sefer Shalashon. Okay, go ahead. Oh. Sefer states, when trials did, no, no, when when trials no, did our ancestors test. We, we stand, we stand trials, right? We stand trials. With 10 trials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. yeah, with 10 trials. Yep. Mm -hmm. With 10 trials that our ancestors test God in the wilderness, but their judgment was sealed only on account of the sin of Lashon Ra, as it is written. They have tested me these 10 times and did not heed my voice. And it is written, you have made Hashem weary with your words. Okay. So the when, when, right? You 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 huh? you you make Hashem wary. I mean, right? Wary, yeah. Mm -hmm. You made Hashem wary. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna do uh, the number two, no number two. Why why why? Uh, the, if you if you need if you wanna read the, the note number two on the bottom. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Uh good. God uttered these words after the spies had spoken their slanderous report of the land. The Talmud enumerates the ten tests, right? So when they spoke bad about the land, saying that, you know, it's no good, gonna, mm -hmm. right? Things like that. That was a shot. No, 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 they, they, they started and say that it is good, so but then the, they right? cannot conquer it. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Right. So the generation of the wicked king Ahab was plagued by idol worship. Yet they were victorious in war in merit of their not informing on one another. This is evident from the fact that no one revealed to Chav that Obadiah, aided by others, was sustaining 100 prophets of Hashem against the king's wishes. However, in the days of the Rais Hashal, when informers such as Dog and the, and the Zephites were found among the Jews, their armies fell in battle. The fact that there were children in Shal's generation who were knowledgeable in 49 facets of Torah was not enough to gain them victory, such as the power of Lashon Hara. So, okay, go ahead. What do you have to say? What do you want to say about it? Uh, is, I mean, you can see how, you know, Lashon Hara can destroy a person no matter how righteous he can be, you know? Exactly, but uh, one I just want to point out. I mean, to know so much story. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, yeah, to know so much story. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, it says that, uh, you know, these these people were like, you know, they knew so much Torah, but still it wasn't enough to, you know, win a battle because mm -hmm. Sean and I at the end of it destroyed them, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, right, so let's stop here. Then we go to Mishnah Torah. And we're on uh, page three, uh, 322. Okay. So page uh, 322, and we're on Chavacha number 11. Chapter 5, Chavacha 11. So, and it says, so let me read this out. Come into this man. We go back with commentary and discuss. Okay, so it says, the way of the sensible man is that the first one uh, should establish an occupation by which he can support himself. Then he should uh, purchase uh, a house to live in and then marry a wife. These orders of priorities may be inferred from Dvarim, uh, chapter 20 and uh, verses 5 through 7, which states, who is the man who has planted a vineyard? but not uh, redeemed it. Who is the man who has built a house, but, uh, did not, uh, but uh, not dedicated? Who is the man who has betrothed uh, a woman, but not taken her, her uh, to wife? In a contrast, a fool begins marrying a wife. So don't, don't jump to any conclusions, okay, please. Then uh, if he can find a means to purchase a house, he purchases house. Finally, toward the end of his life, he will search about for a trade to support himself from charity. 
or support itself from charity. No conclusions, don't jump to any conclusion. This is also implied by the order of the curses mentioned in Dvarim 28, uh, verse 30. You shall betroth a woman, you shall build a house, you shall plant a vineyard, right? Uh, there is a, your behavior will be a disorder. So meaning a disorder, meaning what that you, you, you shall betroth a woman, so it, meaning it's out of order. You shall build the house and you shall plant the vineyard. There is your behavior will be disordered so that you will not succeed in your ways. However, with regard to, to a blessing in Shmuel Aleph 18 uh, verse 14 states, and David was uh, thoughtful in all his undertakings and God was with him. Okay. So let's go to the, to the beginning and we're going to explain. So as uh, all of us know, that's not what... Uh, uh, how people live today. Okay, so should be an explanation because it's a uh, yeah. Go ahead. Question. Just according to the Rambam, not according to today. Since uh, number one, he says this. Number two, he's not really happy with people learning kolol for money, right? Because that's also quoted in Allah with him, right? So my question is like this: Would he also not be happy with someone getting married? To uh, a rich, uh, to a woman with a rich father-in-law to learn in kollel, or would he be fine exactly, with that? Exactly, exactly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so not not everybody agrees with the Rambam, as uh, but as as you see, you know, he, he uh, Rambam uh, like, uh, say that this is halach, and people today they live uh, totally opposite, and uh, the the most prominent people. People uh, live exactly opposite what Rambam says. So we have to understand why he's saying one thing and uh, and what exactly thing he's saying. So it's not uh, okay. So let, let, let's read this commentary and explain verse by verse. So okay, the way of sensible man. So who is this sensible man? Here Rambam does not uh, use the term wise man, the Torah sage. Uh, employed in early chapter. Perhaps this uh, advice is intended for a broader base people, uh, broader base of people, including those uh, would never presume that consider the same wise or Torah sage. So Torah sage, as we said before, this things how he has to conduct himself. Okay, maybe not everybody on that level. Okay, it's understandable, no problem. But here uh, about uh, marrying and uh, building your, your cell of a house and. Uh, I don't know, you get the job, so it's a uh, that sorts everybody, right? So, one second, but me, one second, so okay, all right, hello, Ora. okay, everybody's here, all right, so let's um, so let's let's continue from the beginning, okay, the way um. The, the way of sensible man is that first one should establish occupation by which he can support himself. So basically, first you learn trade. Then he should purchase a house to live in and then marry a wife. Commentary. Uh, ultimately, a person who seek, uh, who seek all three, uh, three of these goals. Ultimate person will seek all the... So meaning that uh, he, he, he needs all three of that, but uh, in... Uh, in that sequence, as uh, Rambo says, the mark of thoughtful approach to life is the arrangement of one's priorities in a proper order. That's what uh, Rambo is called thoughtful. So first, he's going to get uh, occupation, then he's going to build a house, and then uh, he's um, he's going to marry one. So it's uh, just just a comment before we continue. So I mean, to today is very very different. Right, so to today, I, I, if if people would uh, would marry only after they uh, buy buy themselves a house or even an apartment, it would be in the age of age one hundred, maybe, maybe. I mean, uh, right, for first you work, I don't know, have twenty years to 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 save for a down payment, and then you pay for twenty years. So. Okay, so basically, no nobody would ever marry. Basically. I mean, uh, in our days. So in olden days, they didn't have inter uh, indoor plumbing. He didn't have uh, electric. He didn't have this and that. He didn't need approvals. 
from the government, all this uh, inspection stuff like that. I mean, permits from a local uh, king or a local government, of course, they would need. So they would basically come together, like uh, lay some bricks on. I mean, depends on where they would live. On do like uh, build uh, from wood. It was one uh, one room house. It's not like like uh, different apartments with so many rooms, right? Uh, maybe separate kitchen separate. Some uh, some uh, some place for animals and basically this is it. That's was the, the whole house, right? So to build it was uh, once you build it, basically it is yours. You don't, you don't have to pay uh, to to a bank for the next many many years. So it, life was very different. Okay, M much simpler basically. This order was of, of priorities, but uh, but Rambam, but what, what I think we can learn from here is. Uh, so before doing any move in life, so a per person has to think about it, and uh, uh, it's proper to go to a rabbi and I ask him, well, what, what should I do in this situation? And uh, uh, you, you, you would be surprised, uh, like all, from all of these questions that the rabbi is going to ask you and try to point you to, to the right direction because he has a uh, like, uh, wealth of uh, life, right? Of, of the knowledge of life. How it works and stuff like that. So okay, so that's what we call a thoughtful person. This order of priority may be inferred from Dvarim, right? Which states, "Who is the man who has uh, planted vineyard?" So, so basically, he got himself for NASA, but not redeeming. Uh, who is the man who built the house but uh, not dedicated? Who is the man who betrothed the woman and not taking a uh, here as a wife? One to reform. Country. This statement is um, has aroused much controversy among the commentaries. Um, they know that Rambam, in a in a contrast to Sota, in a contrast to Sota 44a, the apparent source of his uh, of his comments changes the sequence of the verse of the Torah, which follows the order house, vineyard, and marriage. Right. So the, of course Rambam does not do things. Uh, just because he, he forgot the order, right? He had specific uh, intention. So he said, uh, so it, there's a, there is house, vineyard, and marriage. But here he said vineyard, meaning occupation, house, and uh, marriage. A possible solution uh, is proposed by Masse Rokeyach, uh, who notes that, that the verse mentioned redeeming and vineyard. There is a benefit from its fruit in a fourth year. Of the growth, right? So, um, just, just so, so we have uh, okay. So let me finish, and I, I will explain. Thus, in um, in, um, in order employed by Rambam, is not necessarily contradiction the um, emphasis of the verse. The Rambam stresses the initial activities of planting a vineyard and purchasing house. The Torah puts the emphasis on uh, ultimate goal, dedicated the house and redeeming vineyard. Uh, the vineyard may have been planted before the house was purchased, even though it was redeemed afterwards. However, the textual dif difficulty is, however, the textual difficulty is resolved. Clearly, the intent of the halacha is that one should arrange the source of income and place for residence before accepting the financial yoke that accompanied married and raising a family. Okay, so what it says here. So ju just because it's a different order does not mean there is a contradiction. So we, we know there is uh, laws of orla, right? Orla, that you're not allowed to eat uh, the produce of the vineyard or other things, uh, other fruits, uh, um, fruits of, of the tree for the first three years. The fourth year you have to bring to Yerushalayim, eat Yerushalayim, and basically after that it is yours, you do whatever you want, right? So basically just because he planted the vineyard, does not mean that, that he has a way of Parnosa, right? He still needs uh, needs to do something. And in the meantime, he can build the house. So there is no, no contradiction whatsoever when, when Rambo say, uh, like, uh, change uh, the, um, the sequence. Right. Yeah, go ahead. What's it called? So you mentioned a little bit earlier over here about, uh, you know, uh, wisdom with age, right? That, oh, okay. So my question is like this. Let's say I don't know your Litvish or your Chesidish, whatever you are. Uh, then there's a rabbi who's, uh, you know, let's say 50s, let's say about his 50s, who is also Litvish, also Chesidish, you know, same as you, right? 
So you can either go with him or you can go with a rabbi who's, let's say, 75 or 80, but, you know, different mahalach. Like kosher mahalach, but different mahalach. Which one do you choose? Which takes precedence? The same mahalach or older age of wisdom? It's a, it's a, it's, it's not age, uh, it's, it's more wisdom and uh, life experience. Mm -hmm. So what, what takes precedence? Life experience or mahalach? The same mahalach? So life, uh, life experience, if, if you, like, okay, so... <clears throat> So it says before before a person is uh, is qualified to be a posseg. I mean, of course, may not, may, it's it's a little different level. I'm, I'm, I I just want to bring a different point. So he has to attach himself to a bigger posseg, sit with him as much as needed. I don't know, like for several years, three years, five years, listen to how this posseg decides the situation, and then he can decide the situation. So it's like it's different level, upper higher level. So here we are talking about the uh, like a, a little. Over, right so basically if, if the 75 old uh, person is, is he's there not everybody is there at 75 and just because he's 75 does not mean i know a bunch of uh, 75 that are like, like a babies you understand but he, if all his life he learned to learn, or many and he has wisdom right and, and you trust that you, you in your conversation you see that that, that he's sound person yeah you can go with him I mean, it's uh, it's not uh, that. Uh, I mean, if, uh, or you can go with other one. It's uh, basically it's your, your decision. It's it, you cannot say it's it's hard. It's hard to to evaluate the wisdom of a person. You understand? But when when, when you talk when you talk to a person when you in a contact with him, so uh, I mean it, it becomes easier. So just because somebody is uh, younger or older, you cannot. Uh, you cannot uh, say that somebody is wild. For example, I give you examples. So there are many older people and the rabbi. So that, but, but the, compared to his wisdom, they're like a little kids, even though they uh, they uh, learn Torah, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 years more, more than him. You understand? So that's a plus siyata dishma. It's it's, uh, it's uh, individual based. So, but it says clearly, make yourself a rabbi, make yourself a rabbi. So you say, if I'm going to listen to this person and you pray to Hashem, so Hashem sends you right answer through this person. Whatever answer, it doesn't matter what that's. But, uh, and he, when, if this person is worthy, so Hashem is going to provide you uh, the right answer, basically, to what you're looking for. Understand? So, all right, so continue. So we, uh, so we need to get to the bottom of it. Why, why we do everything like opposite? So, um, so Rambam said, so basically first uh, he has to uh, secure the source of income, then place to live when, uh, I mean, uh, uh, when, uh, when, uh, where, uh, where, uh, where to bring his wife, basically, right? Why? Because it's, uh, it's one of the three things that he signed in Ksuba, that he provides the shelter for him. Okay, that's uh, okay. He can rent, he can uh, live in his mother's basement. It doesn't make any difference. So, I mean, if she's okay with that, uh, with that shelter, that, that's no problem. If she said, no, I want to mention, so that's, uh, that's uh, you, you are not smart when you were uh, married, basically. Okay, so continue. In a contrast, the fool begins with marrying the wife. So today, all of these people will call. You say, of course, I mean, the, the guy does not have uh, $200 to, to, to his name. And he, he marries his wife. He's 19, 20 years old. That, that's, uh, that's a smart thing to do. Okay. Commentary. In a contrast to, uh, to mention in the Talmud passage cited above. Okay. So, so uh, Rambam calls him a fool. Let's see. Continue. Then, uh, if he can find the means to, to purchase, he purchased a house. Maybe father gave, uh, okay, purchase a house, okay. Finally, uh, toward the end of his life, he will search about for a trade to support himself from, or support himself from charity. So, and uh, Rambam is very against charity, very much against taking charity. Right? As far as I understood, uh, he's actually against having not uh, charity, but having like say monthly donations from someone. Charity, like oh, yeah, exactly. itself, is okay. Right? Exactly. Exactly. So he Rambam wants people to work, make this their honest li living, and that's it. Right. So he he does not want people to depend on the public. 
I said, basically, like, um, um, in all the days, it was like a com community farm. Maybe I explain, maybe not. So it was like a community farm. So it, it, people were living living in a town. So all, all of them were, were belong to one shul. It was usually one shul on the, for per town. In a bigger city, so more than one, but let's say one main. And uh, there was special person assigned to Tzedakah, uh, the officer. So they and he, he would have the list of the people and their needs. So all of the poor people. And uh, they, they had a special tax per household, per head, and how much uh, everybody have to con contribute to, to feed all of these poor people, basically. Yeah? You understand? So it was that uh, they were responsible and uh, it were, would come from this fund. So if this guy decided to go to one tour all day, so basically it would be burdened for everybody. Not, not everybody agreed to pay for him, right? Uh, I mean, uh, why should I pay, uh, like uh, in my black day, they changed the, the payment like I don't know, like every few years. I, I don't want to pay. Like it costs so much money. It was nice. Why would we rip it off? Like uh, like uh, for me, it's waste of money. I personally very disagree. So same day they, they they want this guy to go work even uh, uh, the, the, the lowest paying job and just do do self sufficient. You understand? So small question: Why uh, for how long? Because obviously you said we today we do the opposite. For how much time since this Rambam did they actually do what the Rambam said until he changed, like 100 years, 200 years, and so on and so forth? How long? I, I think that the way I understand from, from all the, from the books that I read, uh -huh. right? So it's, 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 it's only ju just recently they, uh, they did this call. Uh -huh. In olden days, it, it was not like that. So even if somebody would go to Yeshiva, right, a famous Yeshiva, they, uh, the, the, the people of the town would, would, would cause these people. They would eat by them and some, some, some many times sleep by them and go, go to learn. Mm -hmm. So, so isn't the answer? But it was much, much cheaper. And so basically once he get married, if he got, if he would get this uh, rich father-in-law, okay, he, he continued, but most of them did not get the rich father-in-law. So very simply, the answer most likely is why we do the opposite today is because we're not on that Madriga, I assume, or like, do we have actual halakhic reasons? Okay, I, my, it's, it's my, my personal take because people uh, today is much ri richer than they were before. <laughs> it's just much richer and they can afford people to, to, to sit in a call and pay for their expenses. Plus government programs so they can have medical insurance for example. Or food stamps and stuff like that. So that's uh, that's all a combination of the facts. Before it was not available. Mm -hmm. And you understand? Okay, yeah. so let's continue. Uh, so let, let's read 136 commentary. Not the commentary to the following halacha for Rambam's perspective on living on charity. Okay, exactly. Rambam does not like all these things. Okay, he, he was working all his life and uh, he was uh, writing the books and uh, he was a great Torah scholar. So he said, uh, you, you don't need. Uh, Basically, to to stay in cold. But uh, and another thing that uh, the times were different, and uh, everybody were were the dressed modestly and stuff like that on the street. So today you go in the street, it's uh, it's uh, basically it's I mean you 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 lose everything that that you learn in the kolo, I mean in three seconds basically all of the holiness that you acquired then just wiped out. Okay, continue. This is also implied by the uh, order of the courses mentioned in Varim 137. The only source cited uh, for the following interpretation is Lekach Le Tov, um, a relative later collective uh, collection of Midrashim. Okay. So it says, um, you, you shall betroth a woman. So, right? And you shall build a house. And you shall play, plant a vineyard. So, as we said before, it's a uh, it's a curse because uh, there is the behavior is distorted. So I mean, when a person does not know what's going on. Coming turn. There is, in addition to the curses explicitly stated in the Torah, the Rambam infers a curse, which is not expressly straight, uh, stated uh, in the verse. There is, uh, you will act foolishly and conduct your life in a topsy, topsy turvy fashion. In a, not, not the bright way, that will bring uh, about your failure, right? So, so basically, the, there are some people like, um, I don't know, like uh, they, 
they they open such a business like you just look at the business i think how how you how you plan to survive you understand so it's like you see uh, like in the beginning like it's it's a waste of money he's the guy is going to close his business in uh in i don't know in, in, in a three months in a six months he's going to run out of the money because it's not was not smart idea but in his head it was it would be so profitable and stuff like that so that's so one of the examples when uh, people are like uh, do not think straight and they just uh, do things based on their emotions okay um okay so 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 Rambab says one more time your behavior will be distorted so that you will uh, not succeed in your ways unfortunately so when you go against the, the rules so uh, usually people do not succeed in many Torah communities, people, okay, so here's an answer to us. Uh, in many Torah communities, people are encouraged to follow uh, this thoughtfulness approach to life. Meaning uh, that you have to have a job and stuff like that, and buy yourself a house, residence, some car, uh, like rent, like, uh, but be stable, basically. That if you rent, don't, don't rent like uh, uh, that you would pay like 90% of your salary for the rent. Okay, paying normal apartment, wherever you can afford, and that's it, right? Young men study in uh, yeshiva, marry, and often proceed to study in column, before even consider how they will learn uh, livelihood. Right? So the answer is, that's what people do to the many people. Not many, but the people, some people. The Torah leaders who encourage this lifestyle see that the age uh, of one in which uh, an abundance of material blessings have been granted, right? So in a, the, there are many rich people who can uh, support these uh, uh, calls. There is no problem. But also as one in which the level of commitment to the Torah in Jewish life cannot be compared to the, the previous generations. Therefore, they advise making temporary sacrifices in material realms in order to attain greater spiritual development. So, I mean, that's uh, the translator, translator's... Uh, Justification of what's going on today. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Actually, does Rambam, Rambam at all have a problem with women working while men sit in kollel or no? Say, say it again. Does Rambam have a problem with women working like a job while? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yes, yes, yes. Of course. Okay. Well, it, it's not modest, especially today. It's different, right? But uh, then those days, it was not modest for women to work. I mean, they they could do the work in their houses. Like some somewhere else, some some uh, I don't know knitting and stuff, uh, sewing stuff, right? But would not go like uh, to have an office job. So my my explanation of this, right? Like uh, <clears throat> so today, right? Well, what's going on today? So whoever goes to call, he knows that uh, he's going to uh, live very poor life compared to others. So and the person. Like if in, in his is his mind is uh, unless he's a big tzaddik, right? It's 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 sacrifices. So he see the, the, the these guys that, that went uh, to the scheme to Ishima, right? And they uh, they go to the world of business. They still wear keeper, maybe pink shirt, but still keeper, and they and they're very successful. And they have this car, and and uh, now now they have a sports car and minivan and that van. And they go to this vacation, to the Pesach, they go to, to this place, to another place. So it's not, it's not so easy to, to withstand the test. You understand? It's, it's, it's not so easy so to, to, to commit to, to life of like uh, live very, very, very modest. And I, I know a few families like that. So you come to the house, it's like, wow. It's, it's not much. And uh, the, one, one of the people, uh, he had all, like three cars, like the beat up cars. I said, what's going on with vans? He said, no, no, I, I'm going to donate them. I said, where did you get them? Like, oh, yeah, he said, uh, I have this rule. We buy, uh, we, we pray a lot with my wife. We, we buy a car up to, up to $500. And we pray on auction that it would be, should be good. And he said, many of them lasted for a year, two years, $500. And then he donated them, whatever. So, but basically, that's all he could afford, this person. He's the nicest, sweetest person, a very big family, very like uh, loving family, stuff like that. But he, he committed 
uh, himself to, to live uh, the, this kind of life. And then the, uh, he's happy. So if a person has this personality, that he would uh, look that other people have this all of this luxury and I don't, and I'm smarter than them, I'm holier than them, I'm this with them, so, and plus his wife. You, uh, even may, maybe you great sadly, but unless wife said, okay, you can go to call up and I'm going to support, you cannot do that. Because why? So what you said, that you're going to provide them for, for, for her. So she said, if she said, okay, Mr. Tzadik, you go learn to call. I'm going to provide for the family. That's a different issue. Yeah. But but you cannot force it on her. So it could be. It must be the decision of two people. Understand? So it's uh, so uh, the callers are still can can accept. They have funded, but uh, not not everybody agreed to to live uh, like uh, on that uh, that level. The call rabbi, the way of making it sound is that, uh, for example, the people in Kolol are the ones who are like uh, lowlier. But if you go to a Kolol, let's say, right, uh, at least, at least, uh, what I know of is that you know, uh, it, the Balabatim are the ones who like uh, are the, we take pity on more so. You understand the ones? Uh, you you understand? It's I'm not like I'm 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 talking in in the material. So if uh -huh. if if people are there. And they're happy. It's it's very good. That that's the proper way to be uh -huh. happy. But when you learn in Torah, you will fulfill Hashem's will. I, I'm, I'm not saying that. But if person is uh, like if him or his wife have any doubts, that's uh, they, they all all life they, what would be like in regrets. You understand? So it's better for the person that we just go to work, uh, do do his business, uh, like uh, get, get some profession, and uh, and learn Torah. I mean, for, for him to learn Torah one hour in the morning and one hour at night, and then, uh, I mean, uh, maybe Haruso, like, uh, like during his lunchtime, it's, it's a big deal. You understand? Plus uh, holidays and stuff like that. So for him, it's uh, like full-time learning. Uh, since you mentioned the one hour over here, one hour over there, uh, I was I was thinking, so there was this one person who was talking about Daf Yomi, and he was talking about everyone who learns B and so on and so forth and how they don't like Daf Yomi and so on. And he said, well, when, I, when we go to Hoylamaba, right? Okay, you're going to learn, you know, Baba Kama. Okay, good for you. You have Baba Kama. But I have the whole shots, right? So is, is, is that true that those people who are being are only going to have, like, you know, form of sex? That's all or not? <laughs> okay, so, so for, first of all, uh, it's uh, Hashem. So I, I'm not sure what, what he said. So, so Hashem said that I, I reward people based on the effort, how much effort he puts. So if a person balabais, Right, and, and he feeds his family, right, provides for his wife, for his kids, and stuff like that. And, and, and then he learns. So, and he has only, let's say, two, two and a half hours while, while he's not working, not sleeping, not com, com, commuting, and stuff like that. So, that's for him. It's a full time learning. So, and then this guy, the girl who is the Fayyam, what is it, 45 minutes, one hour? And I, 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 I do not know about it. So I am going with somebody, 45 minutes, and uh, for, I don't know, like, uh, we on this, uh, we on Baba Mitzia. I don't know how, how many classes we had. Maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 classes. We're on the page eight. Eight. And, and we try very hard to advance. And uh, no, 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 no deep commentaries, just whatever Art Scroll said. Yeah, you understand? Know so I don't believe in this that I mean, it's better for other people. If people do not learn at all, they're not going to learn. And that's all, absolutely, that's a great achievement. Right? But, uh, all right. So, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so I have uh, more, one, more than one question, but because uh, the last time I, Rab Raven, many times teaches uh, us about, uh, Emunad Hashem and Bidahon Hashem. But in another, in another sure, uh, he told us to have a regular job. Uh, yeah. At which, uh, which extent or which point uh, this job uh, must or not be or must not be uh, kosher? Or how, how? What is the maximum point uh, where we can work? Okay, so it's, I mean, as we, as we said before, so if, if somebody is married, right? So he has to work to provide for his wife, for, for his family. 
So how much he, he, he should work? At minimum that uh, they would pay for children education, for, for her gifts, right? Uh, on holidays on, uh, to, to make his wife happy, to pay for, for a roof on, over his head. So, so I, I would say if it's over, some people work over, like over time. I, I, when, when I used to work, people like were like workaholics, except me, except me and, uh, and no, nobody else. Only we people work crazy hours, crazy hours. You know, say if if I, I if I come uh, like you know in the morning support by seven thirty, let's say in the morning I would leave like a uh, four thirty, like a uh, normal uh, like eight and a half hours. That's it. But people would come by seven thirty and we uh, leave ten thirty. You understand? And do three hours of commute back and forth. So crazy people. So that's uh, that's uh, exactly Robert Ruin says. So you have to do your shtablus. Shtablus meaning that you you try and your best. And, uh, but, but don't overdo it. So when you start working overtime, you're overdoing it. So if job, uh, if your job said, unless you work like, uh, I don't know, Monday and Thursday, extra two hours, we don't need you basically, well, let's say, right? So that, that's a different story. But if you can avoid it, so you work minimum required hours. That's what I was doing. And that's why I never got promoted in 20 years of uh, my work. No. Uh, uh, but everybody uh, who got promoted, I, I tell you what, they, they, uh, in this company, it's, it's, uh, they were so, so sneaky. So if they give you a title, they give you the, the, the title they give. They, so that you have double load of the work. I said, so the, the manager is yeah, responsible. I'm not responsible. He's a manager and nobody is going to ask for me. I'm a little guy. Eight hours. Go ahead. So uh, by regular job, uh, was he uh, talking uh, about and for uh, Noah Heights or for both Noah Heights no, and for, Jews? Because a regular job may be a forbidden job for a Jew. Okay, okay, so, okay. But, but now, now you go in the, to a different direction. So that there is some jobs that are forbidden to begin with, right? For some non-kosher businesses, uh, some loan advance and stuff like that, uh, like questionable jobs, like uh, loan, like uh, these pre predatory loans, they, they, it's not, uh, never, never allowed, doesn't matter. Oh, also, in other, in other perspective, uh, always uh, a job that is uh, forbidden for a Jew is also forbidden for an Ohai? <laughs> Asking different, uh, difficult question. I'm not, uh, I, I don't have any examples at this point would be, uh, prohibited uh, by a Jew. I mean, um, I don't think so. Right, so right. If, if it's illegal, so on side, let me chat. If it's illegal, well, let's say something illegal or like morally illegal, right? Or uh, criminally illegal, that's uh, forbidden for both of them. Cash but, uh, advance, for example. Yes, yeah, yeah. All, all of these things like uh, cash advance business stuff. Like but uh, otherwise, like if it's legal job and you, you don't you don't do anything against Torah, there is no problem. You can, you can take it. I mean, if, if you have any question, if you have any doubts, ask Rabbi. Ask, like, uh, ask people around. Why, why uh, like, uh, what, what's going on? How do you do your job? So if you don't cheat the customers, let's say, if you tell, tell them the truth, well, one of the people that I've been learning my the long, uh, longest run in Kavrusa, right? So he, he used to work in my company. And uh, he, they, and he's a salesperson, and they try to to uh, to, to make him sell product that does not exist. <laughs> product is not there, and he was signing contracts for tens of thousands of dollars. And he came, he went to HR, human resources, and said, "I cannot do that. They, they make me sell the product. Uh, half of the buttons on the screen does not work. Do not work. Like, how would I do it? Like." Um, of course, he's a religious Jew, right? And, uh, and guess what happened? They fired him. We were saying about the company. He didn't go and went to customers and tell them that the product does not work. He said, I, how can I sell it? And he was arguing with all of the manager of the product. Okay, so it's not my, my, my product. Whatever I was working on, my area, everything worked. Now, not because of me, but whatever different. But uh, that's the thing. So you're not allowed to sell something that, like, Business itself is legal, but something like some action part of it is illegal. So it doesn't doesn't matter. You're a Jew or Gentile. It's not uh, not allowed. 
Rabbi, he, he asked the question if all jobs prohibited to Jews are also prohibited to go, right? Yes. But, but uh, that's not the case. Because, for example, a guy can work at McDonald's while a Jew can't because of milk and meat. Okay, all right. Okay, you're right. Okay, so that, that's a good example. So all of this uh, non-kosher or, or on, uh, on Shabbos, the, 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 uh, the places that open on Shabbos, so yeah. And plus all the food industry, absolutely, yes, 100%. Or, or, for example, sell, sell uh, wool and linen together, like so sell all these boss, uh, boss suits. You know, boss is... Uh, Sharpness 100%. So he can sell these suits, but the Jew cannot sell these suits. Yeah, but I, I asked this question because um, I am thinking a person that wants to, to uh, how to say, uh, per, uh, form a family. I don't know how to say the word. Yeah, 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 for family. Um, and uh, it's it's new for me because I, I didn't know the Rambam has a halacha for, for this uh, topic. Uh, but today uh, we see this is uh, different. So my question is, at at uh, which point we are allowed to, for example, uh, for a shidduch to uh, demand her to have the same bitachon and emuna we have in Hashem? That, for example, she's from very far away. And she's uh, not very, um, how to say, it's in that if we are going to be able to, to be together. Okay, so first of all, we, we cannot demand, but that, that, that's what the Jewish look is. So when, uh, when, when, when the people go out on a shidduch, it's like a date, right? Date in English. So, so they sit down together, like uh, one across the other, no, no touch, no, no sitting next to each other. And then they talk and they ask all these questions. How, how do you see your life? How do you see your life? Now, not where you want to go to vacation, but how, how, how do you see your future, right? Uh, and then she, she would say, I want to have four children, five children, whatever. And he said, no, I want only two. She said, no, whatever, they're, they're not good enough. So, or, or he said, I, I, I'd love to learn Torah. Torah is my passion. I, I cannot live without Torah. And she said, but you know what? I'm looking for a professional. So in this case, like uh, you, you hear this professor, meaning he's working, right? So as soon as you hear this, it's a red, uh, red flag, and that's it. You stop. So that's uh, and, and then uh, and then you 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 talk about this imuna if she has imuna or not. So I mean, don't don't expect that she's going to develop uh, like uh, later on in life. Maybe yes, maybe no, and that then you got stuck. That's the problem. Because I remember, I'm sure that Rev. Reven uh, said that if you are waiting to have uh, hundreds of dollars and everything, then you are going to be single and miserable until exactly. 50, yeah. 70 yeah. years. Yeah. So that that was my the reason of my of my question: how much I can or cannot demand to a girl to have a munat that uh, Hashem will provide everything. Although at the moment, right now, we don't have anything. So, but it, it, it's all, it's all, okay. It, it all depends on her, of course. So if she, you see, uh, um, how, how to put it, one second. So, so basically the rule is if she's not ready, if, if she's not on the new level of the munat, don't don't do it. Don't don't commit to any relation. Don't uh, don't don't uh, don't go further. Don't uh, don't expect that she's going to uh, come up like a uh, later on in life. So you, you're going to be disappointed very much. So, but but on another hand, you 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 you, you have no right uh, like expect that now you you are right and now you 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 your tzaddik will look no, not you but a person right. Big tzaddik is uh, is uh, is decided looking for shiduk, and now the Mrs. Perfect Hashem is going to send the Mrs. Perfect. No, you 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 talk and you see uh, you 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 have uh, you your deficiency. She has hers, but but you you have to analyze it, be realistic. Well, what you can live with? Okay, she has uh, this problem. Okay, everybody has issues, so I I can live with this issue. But but some some issues like uh, for me. Uh, for, for every person, it's a uh, like a red line. I'm not going. That that's too much. That's out of the question. So the conclusion yeah. is at the end that uh, uh, we are not allowed to 
demand the other person, the girl, no. uh, to no. have the, the same level of emuna. No. No. no, we are not. Uh, we 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 must not hope she is going no. in, the, in the near future to have the same. No, no. no. Okay, no. okay. That that answers my, my question. To, you have to like uh, like uh, I don't know if you uh, serve uh, uh, when uh, in, in Jewish world it says that that a man buys buys a wife buys that's a business transaction and all of business transaction they will learn from marriage person. Not all, but many. Right, so he buys. So, so when you go and buy to the store, so you cannot uh, like uh, pretend that this product that you buy is going to do something extra. No, you buy it for a face value, whatever is it right now, and then you say if it's going to be like this, that's I'm I agree to live like that. You know, say if it's going to improve this time, Baruch Hashem, I got lucky. But if not, uh, that's not not your fault, because people build up themselves all of this. Uh, expectation and and, and 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 she wants to be like and and we have this problem we have we, with the girl we're trying uh, we were trying to, to help this she and she was uh, she she became like uh, like she put, put it in her head like she was actress man right? and she like everybody like uh, everybody should like it. I said why 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 should like I have this conversation with like, my wife and we tried to like, to, to to talk her out of it like uh, well, whatever other person says, she wants to be like, and uh, so she would have like as many choices of shidduch as possible. And I said, that's also not normal. And my wife told me like, why, why, why pretend it? Like, and she would bring these guys to our house and uh, uh, we, we meet them, uh, basically she didn't have parents, so we were like a parents to her, stuff like that. So, and, but it was, it's, it was not good, basically. And I said, just be, be yourself. That's what I am. I'm not going to change. Uh, let's say, of course, uh, we will plan to change to the better, but they say, I'm not going to change. He's not going to change. She's not going to change. On this level, am I, uh, am I, uh, am I ready to accept all of these positive uh, things, uh, sides of the deficiencies? Basically, that's, that's what we do. Question. How, how does one know? Like, what's the, let's say, goal line, borderline? Where, for example, one says, oh, I have Imuna, right? Or, or let's say, oh, I want to learn in Kolo. Versus in reality, I don't, he, he, he's too lazy to get a job. When do we know the line? Like, how do we know someone's actual mentality? Mm -hmm. So if, you, if uh, learning in Kolo, it, it means that, that he, he's a serious person. So meaning that, that he's, he's ready for this sacrifice. Not everybody are ready for the sacrifices. Uh, okay, so I'll, uh, understood. So with the call, I'll phrase the question a little differently. How do we know that uh, he actually wants to learn in Kolo versus he doesn't want to work and it's better for him to read? So, exactly. Uh, yes. so, so you talk to his rabbi, to, to his uh, mashgia, who, who knows him better, basically. You know because it, it is a serious question and everybody must ask this question. How, how serious that person is. Okay, so all right, continue. Are we good? Continue. Okay. So if you think that I remember where we were, okay, one thirty nine we did. However, with regard to the uh, with the blessing, so we, we said that that's uh, the the the, um, the the order of the curses. So a person would be confused, but we said that now time is uh, maybe different because as we said, people are richer, they they can spare money, and uh, we have this in laws that. Spare money. Okay, however, with regard to the blessing in Shmuel 18 uh, 14 states, and David was thoughtful. 140, what does it mean? The Targum translates uh, this so thoughtful as successful. So that's what, uh, yeah. Um, through that translation is more appropriate, though this translation is more appropriate, with the context of the biblical passage. Rambam understand the words is closer to the literal meaning. Okay. The Rambam intends to associate to success is byproduct of uh, thoughtfulness. So basically success. So if you plan your, your life correctly, according to the Torah, so it's more likely that, that you will be successful. You understand? If, if you go and marry a girl because of your beauty and you did not investigate anything else, so it's most likely you're not, you're not going to be successful. 
if one follows the Rambam today, will he have siyat the Dishvaya like uh, or or not? Because you know we we don't follow like that today. Most of the people, most of the religious Jewish people, they were, were, were working people. Mm -hmm. Where's the problem? Mm -hmm. So majority is is working. Only a small minority is not working. A lot, a lot of them calls. But uh, in, in the place where I go, it's uh, like uh, uh, it's very interesting crowd. And many people like uh, older people, like, and uh, for, for them, what are, what is the level of success? How many people uh, are in color? And I mean, they, I mean, ch children. How many children? How many? How many families they 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 can support? You understand? So for for them, it's like, uh, and then they still like uh, they, uh, uh, I don't know, twenty or thirty years older than me. They still working full time. You understand? They still running all the all the all, the, uh, the, all of the kind of gray hair. They still are running to the office, uh, finish all in the shabbat. Did not finish. They run, run, run. You, you, you understand why? Because they have to provide for these children, so it's it's also children know the know that, that there is a people and some of them in Israel, some of them in Lakewood. So and uh, so it, part comes from coal, come part, part comes from uh, from the parents. It's it's also you know it's it's, it's also uh, I mean I give uh, the people confidence, but most of the people are working people. Okay, so there is no contradiction with Rambo. Okay, so let's uh, finish. And David was uh, uh, was uh, thoughtful in all his undertaking, undertakings, and God was with him. One forty one. Commentary: um, um, There is his success was not limited to the content of human achievement, but was granted divine blessing. Uh, but we know about it. Okay, time is uh, okay. So maybe we start next. Oh, it's very short. So let's do next one. But long commenters. Okay, so let's see. Uh, one is forbidden to renounce ownership of the cons um, or, or concentrate, consecrate all his possessions and thereby become burden to society. He should not sell the field. So be, basically, uh, that's that's the, the thing that, that we discussed before. So a person cannot be irresponsible. So he, he feels so high like... Uh, he wants to be holy, and I want to dedicate this to the temple, that to the temple. I give it. I want to give this to, to the shul and to the poor people, and people get excited, and then uh, they end up that uh, everybody help, uh, everybody else has to collect money to support them. Right? Right. So basically, don't 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 do any favor for for community and go to work, so we don't have to support your call. Go ahead. So let's say there's a person. I'll give you two people, and we'll see what the right mom says. The first person is uh, in Rambam's time. He gets supported, okay? Uh, but the support is only really uh, $300, $500, right? But there's another person, you know, he has a family, so on and so forth, okay? And he gets a gift, uh, and he gets a gift of, let's say, two, uh, $300 as well, okay? Uh, for five, $500 to make the example better. So is Rambam going to say, that the person who gets five hundred dollars gift because he's fine with these gifts, he's fine with these small gifts. Is he going to say that he's better than the person who is mamish, you know, uh, completely lives, studies Torah, and only gets support off of these three hundred dollars? Because what matters more, the money going from the community or how much the, uh, money the person is getting, how much the money affects him? You understand? So okay, so Rambam's approach. So we we're going to start stop here because I'm sure you have excellent different questions. So uh, the, the Rambam's approach, yeah, don't, don't be burdened to, to others. J just because you decide whatever you decide, don't, uh, don't be like a burden to the community. So in this, all of the callers, so people approach or, or these rabbis approach like uh, uh, Rosh callers, they would approach uh, rich people and say, you know, they want to contribute. So this, uh, this guy say, okay, I'm going to contribute, I don't know, $20,000 a month, let's say. I can commit to 20000 so the, so the rabbi is counted that he has twenty thousand, and I can uh, I can hire uh, to, to work in my call. I know five people, seven, whatever, whatever the number of people. Uh, plus he has to pay building expense, this expense, uh, pay, pay to the teachers, other people. Okay, so basically it's like a job. So it, it's not like a person throw his son on the community and say support me. I said so. This uh, idea of the call is a little different. 
Understood. Understood. Okay, so let, let's stop here. So, okay, we open for questions. Okay. Have any topic, go ahead. I'll ask you the question that you want me to state. Okay. So, okay. Uh, what's it called? Number one. Uh, when else except outside of, let's say, saying brachas, right, are you allowed to not wear shoes? Like, only Shemayin Ezra, do you have to wear shoes, or Shemayin Ezra and Shema, and so on and so forth? So, uh, okay, so so let, let's let's improve this question a little. Mm -hmm. So, if a person dawns at home, right, mm -hmm. so if he, he prepares, so if he's in the shul, you have to, like, uh, look appropriate. But even at home, so if, unless he's sick, like you see, so it does not matter where you are, and we learn it in our kids or class. So you stand in the front of the king or the kings, whether you're at home, whether you are not at home, it does not make any difference. So, and I know that in some houses they do not uh, like when people walk in the shoes, they have carpets, this and that. So, in this case, I had this issue with, uh, with one of my students, so I told them just uh, by, uh, like uh, by, by, by yourself. Uh, like separate pair of shoes, right? And never go outside with this pair of shoes, right? So the family see that these shoes are, are house shoes, like you slippers, right? Uh, so they, they clean, 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 absolutely. So that, that's how he, he, he was able to pray in the house. That's one of the solutions. Mm -hmm. You understand? So basically, if you st stand in front of the king of the kings, you dress appropriately. Wait, so it's at all times, even when saying a bracha, you're saying, or when, when, when you say bracha for a food, for example, you, you, you don't have to like dress now, of course. Uh huh, uh huh. But for let's say, for example, prayers, I, I'm, I'm talking about prayers. Uh -huh. when, when the same prayers, uh, when, when study, okay, study also a little relaxed, so you don't, you don't have to wear shoes and all of the rest of So I'll, I'll give you this example then. Let's say I'm saying kurbanis, right? At the very end, we say, you know, speedily build the base of Nictus and so on and so forth. So for all the actual carbonus, I won't have to wear. But for that small part where we ask for the exactly. we have exactly. to wear. Exactly. That's, uh, that's uh, exactly. That's uh, uh -huh. that's an actual request. So now, now you don't, uh, it's a good point. You you don't say carbonus in general. It's not only in general, but it's, it's a mixed up, mixed uh, mixed with, uh, with uh, actual prayers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that means Birkha Samazan we would have to say with shoes. So Birkha Samazan, so many, many are lenient. So if it's not Shabbos, but if it's Shabbos, uh, holidays, so uh, me personally, I never lenient. So I would uh, wear a jacket and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, but uh, during the like, weekdays, I would not wear a jacket. Okay. So next question is, let's say I wear, I don't know, uh, a jersey, right? One of these NBA jerseys, whatever it is, okay? Does it count? That's, that's the problem. That's the problem. It's just so, so, so. So uh, it's, it's a, going in, in a ways of going. That's, uh, that's what we learned. That's what you guys, you guys uh, missed. Uh, we, we had well, this class. We started uh, when, when uh, there are only a few people. So we started with our friend Or and uh, Mo Moisha. We started uh, this uh, Abadat Kachabim. Uh, I, I, I don't wash it. <laughs> Uh, go ahead. So, so basically, all, all of these things should not be worn by a Jew. Uh, e even, let's say, you have, like, let's say, a logo, right, of some team or something. Yes, on shoes, shoes, on shoes. shoes. So, so you, you give this, uh, the, this logo, this team, this sport credibility. What if you only wear it at home because it's your only slippers? What about then? So, but, but still, like, uh, Hashem is at home also. I hear I hear, I agree. So, Mamish, throw them out. Long <laughs> story short. Okay, got it. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, so let's say I have a pair of shoes or something, right? Which says that uh, on it, it says wool, and the other one, it says synthetic, okay? Is but, one, one the, two, two, two different pairs of shoes? No, no, no. Same pair of shoes. Same pair of shoes. Okay, okay. okay. On one side, right? On some other side, not the main side of the shoe itself. It says wool. And on the other side, it says uh, synthetic wool. On the, on the site where the shoe, you know, is manufactured, the company of the shoe. So do I trust the company of the shoe or do I say we don't go lenient? I mean, since, since it's a biblical, uh, probably be a biblical issue. No, I mean, it's, it's not probably. It's a biblical issue. So we go in stringently. So uh -huh. many times, many times when you go to, to these people in, uh, in uh, this, what is it, in uh, in the sharpness you know, lab, they, 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 they would see, and they even, they're nice people. I mean, I don't, whatever I meant, they're nice. They said, okay, don't, don't, don't pay me. There's nothing with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
What's okay, it? so I mean, for some uh, pieces you pay, for suit you pay, for the for, for the pants you pay, but uh, for some other things you don't pay, they they fine. When, when it comes to shoes, though, because you said, let's say something has wool, right away we assume it might have linen. Does that yeah. also apply to shoes? Because the uh, shoe, you know, slippers, uh, you know, it, it is what no, it see, is. What, what is it? What, what, what is the difference? Okay. So you, you cannot wear and you, you cannot wrap yourself. So that, that's why many people make this mistake. So even your blanket, you have to check your blanket because you wrap yourself in the blanket. Uh, so I, I have this question for you then. What does one do? You know, let's say he has like 10 suits, five suits, whatever it is. He has to carry them somehow. So one way of carrying it is putting it around your arm or putting it on your back or whatever, you know, having the hangers on your back. When, was, when, when, what, what are you um, you're taking it to the shotness lane. Okay. You have to carry them somehow. You know, you hold it over your shoulder. You put it. Well, well, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Exactly. So how does one do it? Because you're doing the air of shotness, maybe by uh, by having it. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, okay, 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 no, no, no. You, you're doing the mitzvah. You do. You bring. No, it's not wearing. That that's not how you you wear over the over the like uh, on on the hinges. That's not how normal uh, way of wearing. Uh huh. Understand. Okay. Got it. That's all. Okay. Any other questions? Other people, or you are quiet today. Any questions? Uh, I I have a question about the minyan. Uh, for minyan, example, for me, I am. Uh, for example, for me, uh, it's the first time I'm trying to pray something, a uh, service in the in the synagogue. Yeah. Um, can I stay silent the whole time? I still be. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yes, yes, oh, yes. But if I am a convert, uh. I count as a minion or not? Uh, a convert counts after he can converts, but before he converts, he cannot be count. And uh, the, this person has to come come over if if it's only ten people, so it's a small congregation, so he can come over and say that uh, to Gabbai, not to announce to uh, or Rabbi of the show, say that uh, I'm in process of conversion, so so he would know what to do. He would not count. That's it. Uh, so I mean, it's needed if if there are two. Want to be, um, and, and anyway, he, ha, you, he has to say because they might uh, call him uh, to, for the reading of the Torah, which is he cannot go up, right? He cannot say all the blessings and all the blessings in vain and stuff like that. So all this. If if he if a Jew is a mechalel shavos, uh, how much this uh, this punishment or uh, ban is is on him? How much punishment for a Jew that Michal? Uh, how how much how much time and and who is deciding a court a court a court or some something? Oh, oh oh okay so so in uh, when we have the base of Middash, when we have some heads in our um, uh, great court of seventy two people so seventy one uh, so. Uh, so what, what 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 was it? So uh, that only if they catch somebody, a Jew that, that do melacha, one of the twenty nine melachas that we learn in our different class that uh, tomorrow, Bizar Hashem, we're going to learn another melacha. So and they uh, they uh, they warn him and stuff like that. that they question the witnesses, so they give him death penalty basically. But so, so. if there were no no witnesses, so he gets uh, death death penalty from Hashem himself. So finally, if if one is uh, unsure or sure, uh, not very sure if he's Mechalel Shavos, uh, it is a sin for uh, try to be uh, counted as uh, part of Minyan? Well, on, on, on his side, 100%, yes, he has to say. Okay. I mean, uh, we, we are not policemen. We, uh, like when, for for example, when, when a new person comes to synagogue, right? When I down, like, I don't know, the, the people come from, I don't know, I, I never seen it before. I've been down into there for several years now. And uh, there are many, like, people come and other people know that. I don't know, maybe they visit some, maybe they used to live in the neighborhood. I have no idea. So so we assume when you see a person is a keeper, right? And uh, he, you see that, that he's not first time in the synagogue. So we assume that he's a kosher Jew. That's it, and unless you have some reason to suspect he's not. You understand? So you, you, we can count all of them. 
Oh, what's it called? But for converts, it's better not to go into a Syrian shul, I heard, correct? Because Syrians aren't the... Uh... Okay, so you start in this... Uh... <laughs> so Syrian, it, it, was a, it was a decree that their rabbis passed uh, maybe a hundred years ago mm -hmm. because the people were going all the derek and they started intermarrying. Mm -hmm. So they say that uh, in uh, so this uh, uh, converts are forbidden. Why? So, so he, she, she would not say, no, no, I want to convert. So, and she would convert for money because uh, she doesn't have a lot of money, or I don't know, I, I didn't count how much money they have, but people say they do. So, and uh, so they would, uh, all of these non Jewish women would convert for the money. To, so, to stop that, a rabbi say, not allowed, basically. But, but if they live, um, some of them live, it's a known fact, with the non Jews, there is no problem. But convert is a big problem. Especially if he's a big supporter and he gives a hundred thousand dollars, so it, that's that helps the cause. But it's not Jewish way. Jewish way, uh, Hashem said many, many times, eighteen times, or how many, maybe more, in Torah that we have to love the converts and we we'll, we we'll learn that it's special mitzvah, separate mitzvah to love the convert. One of the six hundred thirteen. So how how is it uh, loving the convert if uh, we don't want to convert him in the minyan? Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So if not, so thank you very much, everybody, for joining with us. So until uh, tomorrow, same time, 9 p.m.